everyone and welcome to the one-to-one -one interview and today we are getting a view from the opposition ahead of the game against Leeds and I am joined by former Leeds and England goalkeeper Mr Paul Robinson. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm looking forward to this game. Yeah, very much so. I think it would be a lot better and a lot more highly anticipated if the fans were in there. We all know the impact that the fans not being in the stadiums have had and I think none more so than this game. This is obviously a huge fixture that when Leeds first came back into the Premier League, all their fans looked for. And I'm sure United fans had a sneaky look to see when the, the old rivals would be back as well. Definitely. I mean, as a former Leeds player, how happy are you to see them back in the Premier League where they you know, rightfully should be with the history that they've got? And how happy are you to see this rivalry back in its fullest form? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's a fierce rivalry. It's pure hatred and it has been for, for a long time ago. You know, you say about local derbies and, you know, the people go to school and work and have the bragging rights, whereas this is genuine hatred between two sides and it has been for a long, long time. But for Leeds to be back in the Premier League is fantastic. I mean, the term sleeping giants far too overused, in my opinion, for football clubs, but Leeds really have been. I mean, for 16 years, nobody would have thought that they wouldn't have got back in the Premiership, never mind playing in the third tier of English football. Um, apart from United and Chelsea fans, I think they're fast becoming people's second favourite team as well because of the way that they play. You know, they're open, expansive game, trying to create chances, trying to score goals. And the impact that the managers had on the Premier League, I think everybody's keeping an eye on them and they're, they're a really good team to watch. Yeah, and I think the way that they started the season as well, I mean, taking away the hatred, it is, you know, a, a great story of a team coming back up to the Premier League. They've got such a charismatic uh, manager. They've made some great signings as well. Um, so, yeah, it, it is, I guess, as a football fan, taking away yeah, the hatred, like you say, it is really good to see. I mean, like I say, they have made one or two signings, but who do you think United need to keep their eye on the most ahead of this game? Well, I think the way they play, it's the it's the front five what uh, Bielsa has. They, they pre press very high. They're trying to win the ball high up the pitch. Rafinha's come into the team um, for Helder Costa, and he's held his place down the last few weeks. They had a, they've had an indifferent couple of results, bar the Thrasher and Newcastle a couple of days ago, which was a fantastic result for them. Um, you don't know what you're going to get from them. You know, they've won games two or three, four nil, and we've seen them score five against Newcastle. And at the same time, they've shipped four against Crystal Palace and Leicester. So the way that they play, they're always vulnerable to conceding goals. But United, you know, they'll be looking at the, the front part of, of, of Leeds' team. Patrick Bamford keeps scoring. Um, you know, his, his conversion rate hasn't been great. But I think the United's problems will come from, from the wide areas. Uh, Rafinha down one flank and Jack Harrison down the other flank. Jack Harrison scored another fantastic goal against Newcastle the other night. His form's been indifferent. Uh, Bielsa left him out after the Everton game. Uh, he's come back into the side, scored a fantastic goal. So I think it'll be Rafinha down one side and Harrison down the other. And that's where the ammunition will come from. Mm. Uh, and obviously, touching on United, it's been a um, bit of a roller coaster, shall we say. It's been a bit of a nightmare. Uh, one minute, you know, we're beating PSG. The next, we don't even get into the round of 16. And that's not even touching on the dramas in the Premier League. Um, obviously, it's the Christmas period coming up and the games are going to be coming thick and fast. How big do you think that a win against Leeds would be for United? Do you think that it would give them maybe a much needed confidence boost? Well, they're so inconsistent at the moment, like you rightfully say. I mean, every every week we seem to look at the paper or we look in the press or every couple of weeks, all his job seems to be up for scrutiny and under speculation. And then he goes and pulls a result out in Paris and beats PSG. And then the next time his job's in question, they go to Goodison Park and they get another result. They're so inconsistent, which, which has been the problem. But, you know, they've had a lot of criticism, they've had a lot of stick. They've got a game in hand. If they win that game in hand, they're two points off the top of the league, which, you know, it's, it's not all doom and gloom. Yes, they've got problems. You know, there's a lot of situations there. There's a lot of people questioning the manager's position. Leeds is obviously going to be a huge scalp for them, with, with just, the, just with the rivalry, but also their position in the league table at the moment and what three points will actually do for them. It's going to be, it's a big six months, well, six weeks, sorry, for United at the moment. You know, the FA Cup kicking in, um, Europe coming back in to play, uh, where they're going to be in the league. And I think the next six weeks, probably till January, February, will go a long way to decide on the manager's future. His, his future is always going to be questioned because Pochettino is still out of a job. You know, every time he pops up on Monday Night Football or puts himself back in the press, every, uh, it just seems that Manchester United have lost a couple of games. Um, from a Leeds point of view, I'd, I'd much rather be playing United at Old Trafford than at Ellen Road because I think their they're away form this season has been fantastic. We saw it again the other night against Sheffield United um, and they've only won one in six games at home this season. So from a Leeds point of view, the way they play wouldn't change whether it be home or away. And I think, you know, with United's problems at Old Trafford, it's, it's a better opportunity for Leeds away from home. Yeah, of course. And 
I mean, you touched on on Pochettino. There's so many discussions going on at the moment. I mean, could you see him at Manchester United? Because I I keep going back and forth on this one, and I don't know if I'm completely sold. But then at the same time, you look at some of the some of the results Ollie has been getting, and you think maybe it couldn't get any worse. Why not try something new? I guess. Well, I think you know his, his job's been under scrutiny for a long time. Whether he's been the right fit for Manchester United, but they seem to be sticking with him. They seem to be giving him time. It made me laugh the other day when I saw his press conference recently about um, Slavin Bilic being sacked at West Brom, and what he was saying was exactly what he would want. He was saying, "Look, managers are sacked too quickly. You've got to be given time. You've got to be backed. It's a it's a it's a work in progress." And I'm sat there watching him, thinking, "Are you saying that because that's what you want and you that's what you need, or whether that's what you genuinely believe?" Um, Pochettino is a top-class manager, but he's, he's obviously not got a track record of winning anything. But Manchester United have had two top-class managers. You know, look at Van Gaal, look at Mourinho, and, and it's, it, it still hasn't worked properly since Alex Ferguson left. Arsenal are going through the same transition as well at the moment. They haven't got it right in a long time since Wenger left. They had Unai Emery, and now Arteta's come in, and they're still trying to find a formula. Me, personally, Solskjaer, Manchester United is he the top-class manager. The more I hear of him, the more I see results. I, I don't know if he is the, the situation with Pogba. I don't know whether he can he can resolve that. That the balance in midfield seems to be chopping and changing. They still haven't got it right at the back. I don't know whether he's the man going forward. Pochettino, you know, he's he's a proven coach. He, he develops teams and he develops clubs, but he couldn't get Tottenham over the line. But when you know he's held in such high regard that as long as he's out of a job, then you know he's always going to be linked with the likes of Manchester United. Mm, of course. Uh, and I mean, again, going back to the Leeds United game, we do have a young keeper in, uh, forgive me if I say his name wrong, in Meslier. I don't know if I said that correctly. No, but, Melier. It's a, it's Melier, it's a, sorry. It's a silent S. You wouldn't think that I spoke other languages, would you? Um, <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, Dean Henderson also being a, a little bit older, but still a young a young goalkeeper. Do you think that he needs to be given a few more chances in there? And what is your take on the whole De Gea Henderson drama? I mean, I personally think that the media are making a, a little bit much of it, like they're in some head to head battle. But what do you actually think the outcome is going to be? Well, it was interesting that um, he played the other night against Sheffield United. Okay, it wasn't his best game, but I rate him. I think he's a top class goalkeeper. I think he will eventually supersede uh, David De Gea. I think Oli didn't put him in at the start of the season because if he leaves a goalkeeper of De Gea's experience and quality out, then he loses him. David De Gea is not going to be a goalkeeper that wants to sit and play second fiddle at Manchester United. If um, Dean Henderson would have started the season, I think we'd have seen David De Gea move on in January or the end of the season. And that type of the goalkeeper at that level, he, at his age, he wants to play football. He's not going to want to sit around on the bench behind behind a young protege, if you like. So I can see Oli's thinking the way he started the season with De Gea. Um, but, you know, has he hit the heights that we know he can do? He's been poor last season. Dean Henderson's always going to be there. He's going to be knocking on the door. It was interesting to see him play against Sheffield United, the club he was on loan at. And, you know, the reports that I'm reading were De Gea was just rested. And it's, it's very unusual to, to rest a number one goalkeeper. And if that was me, um, you think, you know, the manager's not got 100% confidence in me. He's, he's, this lad's coming in. He's, he's playing the odd game. If Henderson was just playing cup games and he was coming in every now and then, but he's, he's starting to put him in in the league now and we're seeing more and more of him. So I think, you know, potentially that's that's how he's, the manager's going to go. But he has to make a decision. You can't just play one week, one one week and one the next week. He's going to have to put his, you know, his, his cards on the table and make a decision. Yeah, I think that's the thing is that you, exactly like you say, you can't just be picking and choosing, oh, you can play this week, but not next week. And I think a lot of people were a little bit apprehensive as to how he was going to be able to keep Henderson and De Gea happy and it's a really difficult thing to do and I guess like you say sooner rather than later there's going to have to be a decision but you know Henderson and and also you know an exciting goalkeeper for England possibly as well. Well Henderson you can keep him happy for a while because he's been on loan he's not been at the club and he knows that he's behind a goalkeeper of top quality who's been player of the season for however many seasons at Manchester United however long he's been there so to take David De Gea out is a completely different ball game to taking Dean Henderson out or not playing him. He's come back to Manchester United and he knows what he's got in front of him. He's got the challenge to then get into the team. Once he gets in that team, then Oli's got a real problem on his hands with what he does with De Gea. So I think you know, with Romero as well, I think there was talk of him potentially leaving in the summer um, and the manager block to move for him. So I, I don't know where that leaves him in the goalkeeping situation at the moment. If De Gea comes out, I can't see him wanting to sit around and be on the bench. And if Romero is going to move on, then it's an area that they're going to have to look at and strengthen. But Dean Henderson is the future of Manchester United, without a doubt. 
and he's going to want to play because there's a European Championship coming up at the end of the season. And if he's not playing regular regular football, he's not going to get an England squad. Well, he will get in the squad, so he's not going to get in the you know the number one jersey. Mm. Who who are you looking at for that number one jersey with England at the moment? Oh, Pickford plays at the moment. I thought Gareth Southgate was very clever the way that he addressed the media and came out publicly and backed Jordan Pickford. I never had that through my international career, or uh, certainly had it at club level at times. But to know you're the out and out number one and to know that the manager's got confidence in you, I think it was a masterstroke by Gareth Southgate because he could see that Dean Henderson wasn't playing. He could see that Nick Pope wasn't playing to a level that would take the shirt off Jordan Pickford. So he had to give him confidence and he wants to get the best out of his number one goalkeeper. And by backing him, he, he's done that. You can see in Pickford's performances since the international break. Okay, he's been inconsistent this season. He's not played particularly badly. He's made mistakes that need to come out of his game. But since the international break, he's looked cool. He's looked calm. He's looked in control. And he's, he's made some fantastic saves. In the Leeds game particularly, I thought he was outstanding. Um, and I think since the international break, he's, you know, he's made a case for him to still be England's number one, as I say. Currently at the moment, listen, that might change. And the England manager's given himself the opportunity to change that. If Dean Henderson comes in next week and plays for the rest of the season then and plays well, then the England manager's got a decision to make. But given the current hand that he's dealt, I think he's handled the situation very well. Mm. Yeah, I, I agree. I do think he's handled it well. I think rather than just casting him to the side and being like, you've had a few bad games, I think to show that he backs him and that he's got confidence in him must be a great feeling for him. Um, and just finishing off, going back to this big game at the weekend that we're all very excited for, do you have any specific Leeds United memories? And also, I'm going to have to get a prediction from you as well. Don't be too harsh to us. <laughs> no, I just remember the intense rivalry. Um, you know, and the, the the fans coming into Ellen Road. At times, the United fans bust in to certain part, parts of the ground where the shop was in the corner. And, you know, the Leeds fans would be kept away up the hill and... It was always it was different going to Old Trafford. Obviously, it was much bigger, more imposing stadium, and the Leeds fans were, were kept into into a corner there. I just remember the atmosphere. It was it was one of the the most intensely fought games, uh, rivalries that I played. You know, played in North London derbies, played in Lancashire derbies. But the rivalry between Leeds and Manchester United. You, I was a, a kid as a schoolboy there, and you get to be ball boy before you know you actually step up to be an apprentice or a, a professional. And being a ball boy near that the, that crowd and, near, and you can hear the hatred and you can see the passion of the fans, I think that gives you an impression of it straight away. Um, as for a prediction this weekend, my bet every weekend, I always back Leeds to win because they've got the potential to beat anybody. But I always back Leeds to win and both teams to score because they leak so many goals. They, they leak so many goals from set plays and they always look like they're, they're going to concede chances to the other team. But going forward, they'll always create chances and they'll always score goals. I mean, the Newcastle game was a perfect example. They scored five, but they still let in two. So the optimistic Leeds fan in me will go for a 3-2 Leeds win. Nice. The optimistic Manchester United fan in me could go, you know, for a 6-0, but I'm not that crazy. <laughs> um, so I, I, I've, for some reason, I'm feeling like it, it could end up being a draw, a bit like the City game. It was built up and built up, but... I hope it's not. Whatever the outcome, I just think as long as we see a good game of football and a couple of goals, then I know that I will be very happy. But uh, thank you so much for joining me on the one-to-one -one interview. Everybody, make sure that you check out uh, more one-to-one -one interviews that will be coming in the new year. As always, check out everything that we have got here at Stretford Paddock. Again, thank you, Paul, for joining me. That's all right. As long as it's better than the City game, I think we'll all be happy. <laughs> I'll speak to you soon. Cheers, Andrew.